about a few months ago, um, I went to a conference called Hack SpaceCon, which was held at um, Kennedy Space Center in Florida, which was an amazing experience. Um, you know, this is where they they shoot off rockets in Florida here in the States. And so um, I went to this conference. I was a presenter. I was on the keynote panel, but I also did a workshop. And last week we looked or, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we looked at um, reconnaissance when we're looking at an organization. And so I was there and some of the IT leadership for NASA was there as well. And so we went there and they were like, you know, can you use NASA as a as a demo for the reconnaissance? And I said, sure, absolutely. No problem. Um, you know, because a lot of times my students, when I teach the workshops or something like that, they're like, can you do my company or whatever? So, of course, uh, big mistake. But yeah, yeah go <laughs> well, on. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so went and, uh, you know, started doing you know a lot of the things that we did last week, uncovering what websites they had, you know, finding out their presence on the Internet and found a lot of, you know, a lot of domains that um, that were there's a lot of subdomains. And so about halfway through, I get to the section that we're going to go through today, right? We're going to try to finish off reconnaissance today. And uh, one of the sections that I'm going to cover today is looking at GitHub for elite credentials. And um, live at the Kennedy Space Center, I found um, hard-coded credentials of a NASA employee basically on GitHub for anybody to see. So uh, live credentials. And so I had to stop the workshop <laughs> and talk to the <laughs> IT staff uh, and, and basically submit that through the bug bounty and, um, and make sure that they could remediate it and get it taken off of um, off of GitHub. So uh, we're going to talk about you know that that method and a little bit of uh, cred hunting today as well. So and how long did that take you? Uh, as soon as I started the tool, it took me literally like you know thirty to fifty seconds somewhere around there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing about the thing about that technique that we're going to talk about today is just, you know, there's a million developers that work for any company. I mean, not a million, but yeah. anywhere from hundreds to thousands, depending on the organization. They all have GitHub accounts and sometimes they make mistakes and they accidentally yeah. commit their um, their bash profiles or a piece of source code that shouldn't be public to their public profile. And so finding it can be a really effective way as a red teamer to gain initial access is finding creds that have been leaked to GitHub. So now when I do these videos, a lot of people complain that perhaps, you know, we're telling stories, right? It's, you know, it's never going to happen again. But you were telling me offline something very interesting about what we're going to cover today, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we'll, um, We'll go through. Uh, we'll go through it in a couple minutes. Um, so let's let's talk about GitHub real quick, right? So as a red teamer in in my day to day job at Buttobot, uh, you know we're doing red team campaigns. We're very focused on external to internal, so finding initial access. And a lot of times in our space, it is phishing that a lot of people rely on. But since I have such yeah. a a very high skill set with reconnaissance and bug bounty, I am very used to having to try to get into an organization from the internet, not not using phishing, basically. And so a lot of new school red teams are focusing on finding credentials and things like that. But um, the first thing I do, you know, we covered last week, if I go over my checklist here on the left, you know, we found Tesla's IP space, we found some of their acquisitions, and we found basically a whole bunch of servers that they had in the cloud and that they owned, right? And so we're going to start from the end of where we finished off last week. Um, we looked for the cloud right. stuff, and we're going we're gonna to start with GitHub, right? And so at this point in my reconnaissance in a red team campaign or a bug bounty hunt, I am going to still be looking for the last little bit of subdomains uh, for my target. So today we're going to switch to nasa.gov. If you are interested in helping the public good, um, you can go to uh, Bug Crowd, and NASA has a vulnerability disclosure program. So if you find anything with NASA, some of the stuff I found today, I'm going to submit through this, and they will have it. And so, um, yeah, it's a, basically a place where if you find a vulnerability for NASA, they'll take it in, and thank you. And um, it's not a paid program, but it's definitely for the public good, right? We want NASA to be secure. So, But, I mean, you, you kind of alluded to it, and I'm just going to emphasize it. In this video, Yeah. You're going to show us some credentials that you found. Obviously, we're going to blur it out, not make it available on YouTube. Yep. But uh, it's not like this only happened once. No. It's happened again no. now. In fact, I have several examples, but uh, we'll, we'll get to them in a Great. second. So, um, okay. So we're still in the finding websites portion of Recon, right? Um, right here in Git subdomains. And so what I'm going to talk about today is a tool by... Um, a colleague of mine, Gwendol, uh, Gwen, and he makes a tool set that basically is a scraper 
for GitHub. Now, he makes several tools. Um, if I zoom in here, he has uh, a data extractor to find subdomains, to find endpoint, like all this stuff. Basically, all of his tools are written in Go or Python, and they'll go out and scrape GitHub to find all this juicy information for us as hackers. But the one we're going to use today at first is we're going to use GitHub subdomains. Um, and GitHub subdomains will help us find more sites for an organization like NASA. So if I go over here to my console, so I've downloaded and installed GitHub subdomains right here, right? And um, it's a really simple script. You just give it dash D and your target do top level domain. So nasa.gov is NASA's top level domain. And then what you have to do for GitHub subdomains is you also have to give it some of your GitHub tokens. So when you sign up for a GitHub account, just as a regular user, you get an API token. And so that's how it does its search. It needs an API token. And so I have actually eight tokens referenced in this file right here. And then uh, it'll use that to search GitHub. And then the last part here is I just want it to give all the output to a, a text file. And so when I run this, this is the syntax for the tool here, GitHub subdomains dash D, um, and then your target, and then your tokens. And then it will run, and I've done a previous run because it takes quite a bit of time, but it'll run with your tokens, and it'll begin to go look at GitHub and find anywhere in source code commits on GitHub where nasa.gov has been referenced. So you can see here, and this domain was referenced here in this repository. And so it'll scrape and spider all of GitHub to give us every reference it can find to uh, nasa.gov um, servers uh, online. And so when you're done, you end up with a giant list of extra targets to hack, right? And again, that's the point of recon. The more targets yeah. I can find, the more chance I have of getting into an organization um, as, a, as a red team or as a bug bounty hunter. So if you go down to here and I just finish, I can go to my output file since this is already ran. Cool. So this is going through GitHub and finding everything. And then when this is done, I need to put an output file. So three.nasa.gov, and now we should be able to cat three.nasa.gov. And then you just get a list of subdomains it found from nasa.gov, and this is all from GitHub. So, uh, so this is you know finding uh, more assets of NASA, more websites of theirs um, to hack. And you can see there's some duplicates here. So using shell scripting, I would you know cat and unique this. And I think when I finished my big run of nasa.gov, there was something like 6,000 reference sites on GitHub. Um, so NASA's NASA's a tremendously large organization. Um, lots of web servers out there on the internet. So that is discovering domains from, from GitHub, right? And so the tool we used there was uh, Gwendol's uh, GitHub subdomains, which is here, and um, it's written in Go. It's uh, pretty fast for what it does, so it's probably one of the best tools for this type of enumeration. Jason, just remind us from the previous video, for people who perhaps haven't watched it, you say there's a lot of reasons to get subdomains, right? So if you can yeah. just give us like the 30, 60 second overview of why it's important to get subdomains. Yeah. So when you're looking at an organization as a red teaming or red team or in a bug bounty hunt, the web, the main website is often where many users go and just, you know, do their thing, right? But that organization has anywhere between, you know, 10 to hundreds to thousands of other websites, right? And they're normally referenced by subdomains. And so um, we used some analogies last time we were on the show, but the more websites I can find as an attacker, the more opportunity I have to break into a place like NASA or Tesla or something like that, right? So the bigger they are, the easier it is for, for me to get in from, you know, an internet website um, or some kind of server that they put online. And so that's why we spend so much time finding all of these sites, because everyone to me represents an opportunity to hack in. Um, and they're, you know, some of the ones, you know, their main website, probably very secure, right? They've probably had penetration tests done before it. They do a lot of security analysis of the main website but some of these other websites we're finding these subdomains there they've never been assessed for security they're very under secured maybe people don't even remember that they're on the internet sometimes it staff create servers and they just go up on the internet and they never get decommissioned or something like that so this is a very common thing when it comes to red teaming and bug bounty hunting